Hey there, I'm Garbro, one of the voice actors for Thread Thrasher, here to bring you some more stories from D&D. This is going to be part four of this series. If you want more stories like this, be sure to subscribe to Thread Thrasher and enjoy the content we give to you through the week with a myriad of voice actors and narrators to help keep things fresh and nice to your ears. Let's get on to the stories. The best one I can remember at the moment is the story of my character getting chucked across a moat. My current D&D character is a three foot tall halfling named Stevia, who's a bit, shall we say, lacking in the common sense department. Her wisdom score is 8 out of 20. It fortunately all works out for me because it means that I can play her like I play the game, having no idea exactly what's going on, but having a hell of a good time. I also frequently send her on quests looking for cookies. One of the other players in my group is running a seven foot tall paladin who's decided that Stevia is now his best midget friend. His actual words. A few weeks ago, our characters were protecting a trading wagon making its way through a forest where a bunch of other wagons had gone missing before. Stevia was taking a nap in a rolled up carpet inside the wagon and the rest of the group was walking nearby. We were attacked by some bandits, I believe right around nightfall. We agreed to leave one of them alive so that he could tell us where the big boss was hiding, and we did. But after we interrogated him and were going to let him go, our wizard killed him. That led to the paladin grappling with him, which led to an argument in real life, which led to the agreement. The agreement states that if we spare the life of someone who's attacking us for interrogation purposes, then we can't kill them. Instead, we'll just leave them at the scene of the battle, stripped of all their clothes, except for their underpants, and with no possessions on them, other than a blunt. Did I mention that our Drew grows marijuana? Anyway, we found the cavern lair where the big boss was hiding, and we fought our way through the first chamber. I'm fairly certain Stevia almost died. She had an arrow sticking out of her chest plate at the end of the battle. After getting out of the first chamber, there was a moat and a drawbridge to get across it to the next chamber. The guy playing our paladin and I had already agreed that his character should learn to throw mine because it would be awesome. So he and the wizard grabbed Stevia's arms and chucked her onto the top of the drawbridge. And then they threw the rest of the party up after her. Later on, we stole some dogs from the bad guys, and Stevia had a PTSD flashback and nearly killed two characters. I love D&D. My DM was taking us through the Curse of Strad campaign. At the start, we are going down a road and encounter a werewolf, and then kill it. Me being an elf druid, I climbed a tree and asked to make a perception check. In a natural 20 out of me and a good dice roll from the DM saw 70 plus werewolves running straight at us. With them closing in, we are riding our mounts with them scratching at our hooves for a few minutes before we saw a gate building and I sped up to catch it first. Once my people were through, I made a strength check to close it and barely succeeded. We then lit the deal on fire with a spell I can't remember and it saved our asses. Ten minutes into the land of Barovia and we came very 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 close to dying. So I always told my buddies I'm never going to play D&D. After years of trying, they finally got me to try it out. I decided to try Cleric, but wanted to have some fun with it. So, I decided to throw in random quips that since he was chaotic good, violence arouses him. After, we start assaulting some rat men's, not sure what they're called, nests. I say, I think my character has an erection. The guy across from me goes, roll to spot erection. The DM made us do a perception check and roll for length. Ever since then, I'll be down for any D&D. <laughs> Roll to spot erection. You fail to spot the erection. <laughs> My freshman year of high school, a friend of mine earned the nickname Dragon Slayer and was known as such for the rest of high school. That might sound cool, but it was the 1980s, and being a nerd back then was anything but cool. Every day at lunch, we would go to this area known as the Commons and play D&D while we ate lunch. I ran a game that had gone on for a while and finally culminated in a big final battle. The battle itself took us several lunch periods to play out. We are near the end of the battle and it comes down to my buddy Dave. If Dave kills the main bad guy, which was a young dragon, during his attack, they win. If he doesn't, reinforcements will arrive, forcing them to flee and fight this battle again. So Dave rolls a natural 20 and slays the dragon. It's very quiet where we played, and there were about 20 other students and a few teachers in there. 
Dave slays the dragon, then, without warning, he jumps out of his chair, slams the dice down onto the table, and screams, Fuck yeah! at the top of his lungs. It was a pure, unadulterated moment of joy, and it scared the shit out of everyone in the room. One of the teachers said, Dave, quiet down and watch the language. Dave sheepishly replied, I just killed the dragon. The teacher didn't miss a beat and said, I don't care what you did, Dragon Slayer, keep it down and watch your mouth. Everyone laughed, and from that day on, Dave was known as Dragon Slayer. He claimed to hate it, but deep down, I'm sure he liked it a little bit. I got most of my first D&D group killed in the first five minutes of our game. I was playing a dumbass dirt barbarian who lived for violence. We started off in a tavern, and our druid decided we should start a bar fight before looking for work. Upon hearing the word fight, my barbarian jumped on the chance, charged, and stabbed the bartender. Guards were called, and our rogue decided to try and chance the course of events, picked up a chair, and tried to knock me out. Instead, he critical failed and knocked himself off. From then on, it all went tits up. The guards burst in, and I charged straight into their spears, killing me instantly. The druid and fighter followed suit. The wizard was the smart one and fled upstairs and tried to escape out a window. Unfortunately, a city wizard found him, cast fireball, and left a small crater where he landed after trying to stab the mage with a spear. So, in short, my decision to stab the bartender led to myself our druid, and our fighter in bloody messes on the tavern floor, a small crater outside where the wizard was, and the rogue passed out by the bar. After being drugged in-game and left with one turn until we all passed out, one of my friends rolled to seduce the only female character in the group into 30 seconds of passionate lovemaking before falling unconscious. He got a 20. He wrote out a fanfic in hilarious detail about the whole thing and read it to us the next day. I was playing a deep Emascari campaign with some friends. The DM gave us all special loot pertinent to our quest. Mine happened to be a robe that had the effect of protecting a large group from the ravages of the caustic wastes. As we prepared to delve into the wastes, I informed my companions of my new ability and told them to gather around as close as possible. Then I unleashed my power. Unfortunately, my ability was not what I expected, and I had unwittingly become a suicide bomber. The party was hit with a massive explosion of acid that enacted a total party wipe. Everyone was mad at me for the rest of the day. Alright, so I'm playing a homebrew sci-fi campaign with a co-worker. We play whenever we had downtime. Anyways, he's this treasure hunter who stacks his charisma. So he loots the space temple and finds a really strange orb. Finds out it's an energy source and wants to use it to power his ship. However, he can't quite figure out how to actually siphon power off of it. He just knows his energy detector goes apeshit when it gets near the orb. So he flies to the nearest star system, a city under control of a very highly advanced species practically the Einsteins of the galaxy, in search of a specialist who can guide him in his quest. So he finally finds a specialist, an old scientist in the underworld sector. But the scientist is a fucking tool and won't help him, mostly because he can't fathom an energy source like that being used for such a mundane purpose. So my friend does the simple thing. He takes the man hostage, wheels him out of the compound, through the streets of the sector and towards the taxi that will take him to his ship. Well, he found out pretty soon that people call the cops when they see people holding other people hostage. Cops show up looking for a guy holding an old man hostage. The entire city's force. They surround him. It's gonna be bad. Can't fight or they annihilate him. They yell at him to stand down. Specials are screaming out, help me. My friend just says, he went that way. I laugh and tell him he needs a 20. Rolls a persuasion check. Fucking 20. Ah, shit. Dot JPEG. Entire force just books it down the alley my friend pointed down. No questions and no hesitation. Such a great campaign, if just for the RNGs, blessings he got throughout it. I was playing a wizard and hackmaster, mainly because I rolled shitty stats with the only decent one being intellect. We were fighting a group of gnolls, and things weren't going our way at all. I tried to charge one, and knock him back into a greased area. Now, I only had to roll a 9 on 2d8. I roll a 3, and deal absolutely no damage. 
Next turn rolls around and I try to smack him with my sword. An interesting thing about Hackmaster is penetrating dice. If you roll an 8, you roll again and add the total. So my elf wizard with 4 strength dealt 67 points of damage with a single blow, killing him outright and knocking his corpse back 20 feet. It was so impressive the DM decided to make the other gnolls make morale checks. And that's how my elf, who couldn't even carry a spell book without being encumbered, saved everyone with his exceptional combat prowess. A good DM. First campaign I was ever in. Final session. We were exploring an ancient dwarven ruin from a previous war and found it completely stocked with functional war golems. In one room, my wizard is zapped by an odd anvil that we later deduce was used to forge a living soul into the body of a golem. Later, after accidentally reactivating all 1,000 of the operational golems, we continued exploring until we found the treasure room, filled with the riches of war. After not checking for booby traps, we tripped a mechanism that sent a mechanical dragon after us when we attempted to make off with a very large chest of jewels. In order to make our escape, we make a break for the high-speed trans system, basically a dwarven subway, that had taken us to the ruin in the first place. Everyone straps in, except for me, because one person has to manually activate the train. I pull the lever, then roll my agility save. Natural one. I go flying back, hit two rows of stone benches, am effectively folded into quarters, and drop at the feet of our fighter. As I lie there, bleeding out, begging for help, he looks me in the eyes and says, well, I would help you laddie, but I'm not much of a healer. More of a fighter myself. He had many healing items on this person anyway. After hearing that, I die. However, because of the incident with the anvil earlier, I wake up in the body of a war golem back at the ruin. When I discover I can still use magic, I proclaim myself to be the golem army's god and demand they follow my word. After a few very good rolls, they believe me. Convinced I am the Messiah, here to die so they can be free. I told them I would do so after my affairs on this plane had been settled, and the next three hours were spent hunting down Coffee, the fighter, who let me die in my time of most need. I was almost crucified by one of the golems mid-battle, had the army murder two other party members to prove I meant business, and Coffee still got away. Too long didn't read. I died, became a golem, took over a golem army, became Emperor Palpatine slash Golem Jesus, and never got revenge on my killer. <laughs> I am the Messiah, the Golem Messiah. <laughs> That's funny. I was a bard, playing with a party of five. We go into this cave, and all of a sudden, a wave of water comes through and washes us out. Somehow, I'm the only one who succeeds on my saving throw, so I press in through the cave. Our DM makes me go to another room. I stumble across a room with a small band of goblins, which I cannot fight. I put on a jester costume and bust out with confidence, passing my performance check. They are entertained. Meanwhile, the rest of my party has some trouble. Another one gets separated from the group, so we are split into three different rooms in the house. Back to my performance, I convinced the leader of this group of goblins, who was intoxicated, to wear a king costume I have and join the show. He gets up to give a speech, right when the rest of my party busts into the room loudly. I immediately draw my sword and stab the goblin king in the back. Our party makes quick work of the rest of the goblins, and I take their teeth as trophies. Turns out, the other guy that had been separated from the group met the real leader of the goblins, and we are taken into a large throne room full of guards. Using the teeth as proof, we convince the goblin king that we killed his greatest rival, and with a few lucky rolls, he gives us the loot as a reward. Actually defeated the boss in a mock boss battle. Setup. Searching an ancient manor for a night hag. End up finding a petrified dragon that was enchanted to be awoken if desired. So either we could continue on through the manor or fight the dragon. I convinced the group, who are all around level 5 or 6, to fight the dragon by saying, yeah, but think of the massive amount of experience if we win. Well, when we woke him and rolled for initiative, we soon found out that was a mistake. None of our hits landed, and we couldn't make any saves. We remember that the rogue picked up a couple of arrows of fell magical beasts. She took a shot, but it ricocheted off the scales and landed kind of under the dragon. 
I decided to try and sprint to the arrow, tumble and grab it, and then stab the dragon with it in between the scales. Rolled for tumble. 20. Rolled for hit. 20. Dragon had to make a spell save of over 4 to not instantly die. Got a 3. We went nuts. And we gained like 10 levels worth of experience. As the heroes sweep their eyes over the corpse-strewn battlefield, they notice one of their closest ally NPCs bleeding out, but breathing amid the fallen. Andy, do you have any healing spells left? Use the last one on Matthias. I want to save him. He was useful. My character runs over, grabs him, and throws him over his shoulder to carry him back to the camp. Okay, but doesn't your character have big fuck-off spikes on his shoulders? Uh. <laughs> so it's like a... <laughs> was playing a variant of D&D that engulfed the Fallout universe into it. This was about four years ago. I decided to mix it up and play an unarmed combat DPS. We're fighting some raiders that we encountered and I rolled a 20. Everyone freaks out, as happy as can be, wondering what the outcome will be on the table. I pick up the dice and throw them bones again. Bam, another 20. Everyone gasps and stares at the die. Everyone collectively slowly turns to the DM, whose mouth is just wide open as if he couldn't believe the probability of two 20s. If my memory serves correct, they said it's something like 1 in 400. I'll have to double check that. Anyway, the DM looks at the table, and all it says is something like, the outcome is so unheard of, you have to describe it on your own. The DM stands straight up and announces, your first critical punch knocked the Raider unconscious. You pick up his double-barreled shotgun, pull his pants down, stick it up his ass, and fire both rounds at the same time. Due to your bloody mess perk, the mixture of blood and shit sprays on the wall as an exact replica of the Last Supper. I've never felt so good about D&D, but for real though, for those who haven't played D&D and are extremely cautious about it, I say find a group and go at it. It's the most fun you can have in a night and you'll be wanting the next night to come by to pick up where you left off. On top of all that, it's a bunch of laughs and you make a ton of friends. One of my early DMs was a very, very roleplay orientated gamer. Pages and pages of notes, tons of backstory, complex characters, intricate plots, voices, the works. Unfortunately, his players are largely a bunch of hack and slash murder hobos who spit on the mere concept of plot. So the local big bad is a drake. DM is hinting heavily, super heavily, that we are intended to pull a hobbit Look at the drake, snag MacGuffin, and run like shit. Deal with that fucker later. Instead, we charge. At first, I think he's fudging some rolls to try and save us from what would be inevitable doom. But then he starts really rolling terrible. A legendary bad streak of one, two, and the occasional five. And the players are on an almost as epic hot streak. We are doing damage, and it's adding up. The DM isn't the type to cheat and make the boss invincible or have unlimited HP. What a man. Especially if we did a bit of role playing or skill challenges, which we all knew enough to take advantage of. And finally, he starts dropping us. Kill two, knock some unconscious. It's coming down to the last few hits, and while we fought valiantly, it looks like the Drake will win. Till the Barbarian's Blood Drinker Sword heals him for an ungodly amount. And he's got more than enough to kill the dragon, which he then pees on. Accompanied by much role playing and pantomime by your character, with much specification of where he pees on the dragon next. So, having loot appropriate for several levels higher than us, we decide to conquer the kingdom. He refused to continue the campaign when it was clear we were just going to try and conquer every land we could find. First time playing with a few friends, our DM set up a fairly short but easy to understand campaign to let us test the waters before getting into anything more in depth. We all create some basic characters, DM included, so we could have somewhat of an assistant party member and start playing. Well, as it turns out, the DM decided to go with a bard specifically a freestyle rapping bard who also happened to be a fawn. A fawn named MC Fawn Over Me. We figured it'd be fun for a few giggles here and there, but no. He went all out and freestyle rapped every time his character spoke throughout the entire goddamn game. 
This all finally culminated with the last enemy, who happened to be a guitar playing Fawn, our own Fawn's sister. By this point, our Deem is running out of energy and rhyming capability, and MC Fawn over me is struggling as a result. He makes one last attempt to save face, addressing the evil sister character directly, which goes something like, Hey sis, I'm telling you now, you better, uh, wait, what rhymes with now? Uh, God damn it! I can't rap with you around, Susie. Best first D&D game ever. Five out of seven. Ended up playing a lot more with the same group of people. And that's the end of this particular chapter of the D&D stories. I would have my own D&D story, but as you all know, I am the GM for the All Skeleton Party. So what I would tell you is to subscribe to Thread Thrasher. Hear the other stories we're putting out through the week, but then come back here and come to the Bone Zone with me and my skeleton crew. This has been Guard Bro narrating, and I will see you next time.